Welcome to the underbrush of my bedroom. We are currently on the hunt for the untamable creature known as the TBR. The TBR has been known to make many booktubers pass out from sheer exhaustion just by the mere thought of it. Crikey, there it is! It's natural habitat on my bedroom floor in the corner where I don't have to look at it. I have picked out all of my standalone books on my bookshelves because I want to finish them. What you guys need to know about me is I am super indecisive. I have arranged this pile of books many times from lowest page count to highest page count from alphabetical or just letting a random wheel generator decide. That's what I was originally going to do for this TBR, just film my screen recording of a wheel deciding what I'm going to read first. But then I'm like, no, no, be unique. Do something with your own hands. So I've decided to find out what six books I want to read this month. I'm going to throw some darts at some things. I stole my brother's dartboard. He was not happy. It's magnetic. The future. I think I just disproved the future. But I have drawn some icons representing each book in this pile. And whatever I hit, that's what I'm going to read. I put the one I want to read the most in the middle. It is called The Secret History. I hear a lot of people talk about it. Dark Academia, messed up characters, I'm in. But we'll see if my skill will allow me to tackle this. Everything I have over here so far. Before we get started, We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Watching You by Lisa Jewell. Lost Boys by Two Get Third Free by Christina Henry. The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. The Girl Before by J.P. Delaney. Final Girls by Riley Sager. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doby. Do doer. Doer. Because You Love to Hate Me, which is a very, like, child of booktube book. All these booktubers teamed up with authors and they made a book. Brightly Burning by Alexa Dunn. You guys probably heard of her. She has a big author tube channel. The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware, an author I don't really like. Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I tried to read this book before. Could not handle the constant point of view jumping, but I do want to try it again. I See You by Claire McIntosh. The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. It's a big boy. The Devil Walks in Mattingly. A novel. I know. I can tell. Why do they insist on writing it there? The Night Circus by Aaron Morgan Stern. My best friend is demanding I read this book, but it depends on the dartboard. I am a slave to the dartboard. My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier, who has written my favorite classic, Rebecca. The Seven and a Half Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. What? What? The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Dracula by Bram Stoker. It's velvet. Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. Heard so many great things about this guy. I'm excited. Once Upon a River, who features a swan with a very broke neck. Salt to the Sea, which Murphy Napier loves. I remember that. And The Secret History by Donna Tartt, who also wrote The Goldfinch, also in this pile. Now that we have introduced the players, let's see who can get darted by my sure sight and uncanny ability to aim. But first, I also have to figure out how I'm gonna set up these camera angles. Because we gotta have both me in the shot and the dartboard so I can prove I am a master marksman. Look at that tower. Oh yeah, we're gonna have fun tonight. I like this corner. I should just do videos from here from now on. I feel less judged from down here. Let's wind up the throwing arm. Play the inspirational music. Ha! Huh. Oh, that'll work. I need it right here. Okay, laptop, you go over there. Ooh, yeah. It's the final countdown. Okay. We good. Give me those darts. Oh yeah, this works nice. Okay, got my red darts and my yellow darts, but I just had an awful thought. I'm gonna figure out which books I'm gonna read, but now I gotta figure out what order I'm gonna read those books in. I will never be satisfied. I'm indecisive, and I'm gonna aim with my left hand. You guys ready? Editor, play the music. It takes skill to hit the railing. <laughs> that pinata's gonna die. Okay, I want the secret history. I hit nothing. I know this is gonna turn into like a 30 minute long video. Mm. Right above it. Right above it. Look at it. <laughs> it didn't stick. <laughs> this is gonna be the hardest day of my life. I know it is. Did I hit it? Come with me. It counts. It counts. I hit it barely. <laughs> One is down. Got five others. I hit the secret history. It just replay, replay that. But it didn't stick. <laughs> ah, gravity. <laughs> okay. See. 
Aha! It's touching it right on the corner. That's choice number two. They are the books that I don't actually want to read right now, but the wheel dictates the decision. Dartboard wheel, whatever it's called. The implement of my doom. Doo -doo. That was the wall. I can't read the wall. Okay. Uh, blame. Fly, you fool. <laughs> this is what you get for buying a Walmart dartboard. Cheap magnets. Okay. Ah, nope, already hit that one. And I ain't reading it twice. Unless it's super good and I'm in the mood for a rebe. <gasps> I hit the night circus. My friend, my first subscriber, I hit the book you actually want me to read. Three up, three down. Maybe I'll just throw all of these at the same time and see what happens. Ready? Nothing! <laughs> I'm glad these haven't fallen like beneath my bed yet. Heart of the darts, heart of the darts. Nothing. I'm not good at this. You know, I thought I would be able to like hit the bullseye and just walk off and do a dab. No. It hit Dracula. It just doesn't stick. Mm. It did it again. And Dracula is right above the bullseye. I'll have you know, I'm at least getting kind of accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you stick? And one finally went under the bed. I'll be back. Dang it, it's far under there. Stretch arm. Monster I'm gonna have to use this hand to get the dart from under the bed. I knew it would come in handy someday. Whoop! Got it. I am an enterprising young lady. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. You have dishonored me, dot board. You're making a mockery of this channel. <clears throat> it's just not sticking. Maybe I'm being too powerful. Maybe I have to talk to the darts like a lover. Okay. You smooth as the wind, baby. Smooth as the wind. Hit nothing, but it's stuck. I hope you guys are like anticipating me hitting these and not just like being like, Casey, why are you wasting my time showing me your lame archery skills? That's just, I'm losing hope. That's it, ultimate shame. <laughs> Put it closer. Come on, we gotta end this video eventually. Okay, now I just gotta arc it. Hit nothing still. I'll make it a bit fairer and take a step back. Did it hit it? Did it? Did it? Did it? Nope. Right in the middle again. You know, if we were counting points and I was aiming for the middle of the sheets of paper, I'd be winning. Nothing. 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 I am not stopping until I win. Did you see that? It went like that. The dart whirlpooled. Wait. I think we got one. I think we got one. Yep, it's another book I didn't really want to read. That one's out. So right now, in the excitement department, one out of four. But maybe these books will prove me wrong. I was hoping that would be cool. It hit nothing. Hit nothing. So tell me about your day. How's life treating you? Yeah. I got one! I'm not hitting these things dead center. No, I'm hitting like just like the barest edge of them. See, this is where we're at right now. Just got the little tiny corner right there. One more. One more. I will make my ancestors proud tonight. Okay, you ready? This is the money shot. I want secret history. Now I have to arc over that arrow right underneath it. I missed everything. Wait, wait. I think I hit the gold bench. Hold on. I think it's touching it. <sighs> I'm counting it. Goldfish it is. Goldfish. All right, guys. I have my winners that my extreme skills have selected for the next month of April. I'll show you like the little pieces of paper I got. So first one will be the night circus. See, I drew little tents. The second one shall be Once Upon a River, I Drew a River. Original. Third one, The Devil Walks in Mattingly, I Drew the Devil. Commission me to draw your art, I'm creative. As creative as I am talented with the darts. Because you love to hate me, I drew a thorny rose, which is purple. Which signifies angst. Salt to the sea, I drew salt. In a purple sea, my hair is a little stressed out. Peh. We have the goldfinch. Need a birdie up in a tree. 
can y'all yes to Sun Yinji to need to rearrange this dartboard for next month. Just scoot all those other guys in there. Let me sit down and introduce you guys to what I'm reading. For realsies, the actual books, not the papers. Alright guys, I have the winners laid out for your amusement. Here you guys are. We have Because You Love to Hate Me, the booktube collaboration book. Salt to the Sea, which I heard is very sad, so very glad. We have The Goldfinch, Once Upon a River, Night Circus, and The Devil Walks in Mattingly. How do you like these camera angles? Are they fantastic? It's hard to do angle shots when you're filming with a laptop. You gotta like crack open the whole screen like this to like look down. Because you love to hate me. A book where we have like reimagined our villains because we love to hate them and we want more of them, of course. We have authors like B.E. Schwab, Andrew Smith, Renee Audier, Adam Severa, Nicola Yoon, all who have teamed up with a YouTuber, a booktuber of sorts, and they were given prompts by their partner booktuber and they wrote a story based on that prompt. I know we have like a... Jack and the Beanstalk retelling, a Moriarty retelling, and it's written as an anthology, so we have a bunch of short stories that have come together. My phone is going off rudely. Please be quiet, I am filming. Oh, it's my friend. The one who I said wants me to read Night Circus. I think she sensed that I'm about to read it. We'll respond to that another time, because I'm talking to my other friends. Y'all. Salt to the Sea, I believe, let's see, yes, historical finchin, finchin, so I did gold fish instead of gold finch, and I did finchin instead of fiction. Problems. We all have them, but I have more. Salt to the Sea, a Victor Victorian, they tell you you're fine, but you're not fine, and sometimes you just gotta say that you're fine. Historical fiction set in the winter of 1945, four refugees, four secrets. Each one born of a different homeland, each one hunted and haunted by tragedy, lies, and war. As thousands desperately flock to the coast in the midst of the Soviet advance, four paths converge, vying for passage aboard the Wilhelm Gustloff, a ship that promises safety and freedom, but not all promises can be kept. I think I remember this book being explained as like these people on board of a ship that was part of like one of the worst maritime disasters ever. So everyone's probably gonna die. I like it. Once Upon a River. Let's see if I can remember this. I remember another booktuber talking about this. She said that everyone's just chilling at like the tavern in a village and all of a sudden this man walks up with like this dead girl on his back and he's like, hey y'all, I found this drowned girl. Does she belong to any of you? And she looks very familiar. Three families, I think, have like lost their daughter and this girl looks like all of them. So who's this girl? Who's this man? What happened to the girls? But honestly, that swan. How is it still alive? The Devil Walks in Mattingly. I know I tried to read this book before, but the writing style was just weird and I only got like a couple pages into it. So let's see. It has been 20 years since Philip's body was found along the riverbank in the dark woods known as Happy Hollow. His death was ruled a suicide, but for two decades, three people have silently borne the horrible truth. Philip didn't kill himself that day. He was murdered. In the shadow of their hidden sin, each of the witnesses has withered. Jake Barnett, Mattingly's sheriff, spends his day polishing the fragile shell of a man he pretends to be. Aw. His wife, Kate, convinces herself that the good she does for the poor will someday wash the blood from her hands. I want to say she's the murderer, based on that. <clears throat> High in the mountains, Taylor Hathcock lives in seclusion and fear, his madness fueled by burning hatred. But what has not been laid to rest is bound to rise again. Philip has been haunting Jake's dreams, auguring an imminent vengeful return when Taylor finds mysterious footprints leading from Happy Hollow. That's a lame name, by the way. He believes his redemption is finally at hand as Taylor's insane quest plunges the quiet town of Mattingly in the darkness. Circumstances conspire to bring the three together for one final chance at redemption. Can a desperate thirst for forgiveness overcome a lifetime of shame and fear? Okay, this is going to be interesting, my friend. We're going to figure out how this man died. You probably did it. You're the twist villain. How does that feel? The Night Circus, which my friend is desperately dying for me to read. Whenever I look at this book cover, it makes me think of Black Butler. Mm, some bastion. The circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tent is an utterly unique experience. It is called Le Cirque des Reves, French, and it is only open at night. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway. A duel between two young magicians, Celia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood expressly for this purpose by their mercurial instructors. Unbeknownst to them, this 
is a game in which only one can be left standing. Amidst the high stakes, Celia and Marcos soon tumble headfirst into love, setting off a domino effect of dangerous consequences and leaving the lives of everyone from the performers to the patrons hanging in the balance. Ooh, it has illustrations. So we gonna go to a shady circus. Hope y'all like carnies. And finally, the goldfinch about a boy who loses everything, but the only thing he does have is a picture of the goldfinch, a painting that I'm pretty sure he stole. He's abandoned and he's bewildered by his new home, tormented for the longing of his mother, clinging to this painting that is all he has of her. And we're just gonna live through his life and see what happens when you cling on to these things that are best let go. That is it for April, my friends. We are gonna get into some hopefully good books. I am actually honestly only excited for The Night Circus and The Goldfinch and also Once Upon a River because of The Freaky Swan. Hopefully these other three books will be just as awesome, I believe. Who knows? These might be better than these. We will see. I am Casey, thoroughly embarrassed by my awful dartboard skills, and you are probably much more talented than me. Have a jolly old night, everyone.